paintbrush brush. Okay? She's a bitch with a paintbrush. That's all she got. So. Those are some strong words for people who wear makeup. Well, well, yeah, but if if they cried about it, it would run on their fucking face and make the next fucking Grand Canyon. So they're not going to cry about it. So I don't give a fuck if I offend them. Why would you? Are we actually starting? Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I believe we because, have... Because I don't need the internet to know I said the word faggot, okay? That's, we're in some <laughs> dark times right You're, now. Yeah, I know, bro. Everybody's getting canceled. So you, being a faggot, will <laughs> will get canceled for saying faggot. So can I get that really cool, like, um, faggot card where it's like, that's my word? Oh, you, like, oh you I, fuck, see, I see what you're you doing there. vagina fuckers out here can't be using the word faggot. So, so you're, cool, word. you're cool with uh, other gay people using the word faggot? Just not well, non-faggot people. Yeah, I, I, well, I could pretend. I don't give a fuck who uses it. You know, it's like okay, a homosexual is a person who like has a anus and thinks, hmm, a penis should go in there. And you're telling me that they're gonna get hurt by the word faggot? They literally take it up the ass, and they're gonna be hurt by the word faggot. Oh. Like, like fuck, that's like the beginning of the foreplay for us, you know? And it ends with a dick in our ass. So come on, offended homosexuals is an oxymoron. You can't offend a homosexual. But they do get offended. Mo- okay. Most of them do. Okay. So or you, am I generalizing? You're generalizing. You tell me something that's more offensive than taking a dick in the ass, okay? Just a little more offensive. Like, you you say a sentence to me and then tell me, I think I'd much rather a dick in my ass than to hear that shit. You win. Woo-woo. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. This is the... Uh, what the fuck do you call yours? We call this the Warrior Poet Show, and this is episode number two, motherfuckers. Nice. Isn't it like 2-2? Two 2-2, dash two? Two dash two, the 2.0. Yeah, that, that world that has like all the fucking turtles and shit. What do you mean the turtles? 2-2, two two, the Super Mario world. Oh, yeah. We're talking about two different okay, things. Cool. Well, let's stay on topic. What's up? Yeah. How's it doing? How's it going? Um, it's going, man. What about you? It's going good. It's going good. I'm growing. I'm evolving. I'm morphing. You're still short. Yeah, well, you're not saying any <laughs> taller either. I know. We are short. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, I love watching the news because it's like, we need help finding this, this bank robber. And it's like, okay, what's the description? Well, we know he was a Hispanic male, pre-diabetic, five foot six, wearing some Walmart knockoff fucking clothing. So if you see anyone that matches that description, please call 911. And for the next seven hours, 911 is like everyone's Theo and stuff, you know? Okay, I see. So you're like this generic version of a criminal. Look at my ass. Could you pick me out in a crowd? Come on. I look like every guy and girl just overweight and just like, I, I, I want to watch the next Marvel movie. Like, you can't pick me out in a crowd. I'm no one, you know? Now, if you look chiseled and fucking gorgeous with big old tits, well, then, come on. Like, has anyone seen some D-cups walk by? Every guy in the room is going to have a perfect description of what the fuck that looks like. Yeah. A very detailed, perfect description. And it's going to match unanimously. It's, it's like, it wasn't even like the average tits that you see around town, man. Those were perky. Those are some California tits, man. No, <laughs> but when you have tits like that, it's cool because the officers are going to be like, thank you for this vivid description. <laughs> okay, but what did her face look like? The illustrators are like... <laughs> yeah, it's like... Did they look like this? It's like, yeah, but, but with clothes on. <laughs> no, but the cop's okay. going to the cop's gonna ask, what did her face look like? And every one of the hundred guys who saw the tits go by are going to be like, I don't know. I wasn't looking at her fucking face. <laughs> I'm telling you, she had tits this big. And then they go into a description of like more description of how big the tits are. No one would know what the fuck she looked like. I don't know, man, but I could probably tell you uh, her ass. Her ass did look a certain way. I did pay attention to that. If you want to describe no, man, her face. She just robbed the bank. <laughs> yeah, but but not. You just described Kim Kardashian, goddammit. <laughs> well, no, but that would even be different because with a woman robbing her back, she'd walk in and she'd be like, my tire got flat. I need a few hundred dollars. Would any man help me? And there's so many simps in there that they're like, oh, 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 let me let me cash out some money for you. That's just hustling. I don't I don't consider that to be a uh, theft, you know, a little bit manipulative. Uh, I don't know, man. I think women have a lot of power, and they're realizing it right now, and they're using their power, you know. They know what their power is. I don't, you know. But I do know that they have a power, 
that just makes us and it's so weird because this is a man's world you know kind of shit but it's not anymore you know and it never really was i feel like it's just at times where we were at war or we didn't have resources times of like kings and knights but shit was hardcore back then, you well, know? So, like, I, you need men in charge. You I, need men to go out there in the front lines and kill somebody, you know? I actually stayed sober enough to listen to the end of the song. And it's crazy, but the end of the song says, and it would be nothing without a woman. Yeah. I don't think it says that at the end. I think it says it throughout the whole chorus. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pay attention. For people who don't know um, James Brown, get down like James Brown. Um, that's... That's such a great song. And it's so true, though, because what the fuck would we do without women, you know? Because we compete. Men thrive while they're competing. But the thing is that they wouldn't want to compete if there wasn't any women because we're trying to impress them, you know? We're not trying to impress our bros, you know? Even though, like, you sometimes fall into this little situations, you know, where you're at the gym and trying to look good for your girl. And then next thing you know, some guy's like, oh, man, you look so good, man. What are you taking? And, and it's like, for me, it's... it's oh, it, no, that's, that happens to me all the time. I know exactly what you're talking about. For No, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify because it's not like it happens to me. Okay, can you compare that analogy but to a McDonald's? Uh, <laughs> I I'll could try, understand I'll, it I'll that I'll try way. right now, but I'm just, I'm okay. just using uh, real life experiences. But they don't do the whole, like, oh, my God, you're so... No, they, they're... They, it's because, of like, genetically speaking, I was uh, blessed with uh, vascularity, you know? And apparently that's, like, a like a sought-after thing. I don't, I don't I don't want to know if you're vascular. I don't know if want to know if you're Jewish. I, I don't want to know anything <laughs> about your penis, okay, bro? So you can leave that off, this. Please um, censor I'm, it. I'm speaking about regular veins that protrude off mm -hmm. your skin. Mm -hmm. I mean... Okay, I'm, girls who are into that, I see you. So you know where to come. I mean, you know you want vascular. They're never really six Shut inches anyway. Shut the fuck so. up, Thomas. It's five and a half, all right? I'll, I'll, I'll fess up. It's five and a half, okay? You know, that's why you never date a woman from Subway? Because they're used to foot lungs or what? No, because they know exactly what oh. it's six inches, and they know <laughs> that ain't it. It's like, nah. No. But, hey, but real talk. I don't think a six inch from Subway is six inches either way, you know? Yeah, <laughs> damn. There, 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 there you go, you know? Like, they're yeah, fucking, um, they're posing. They're, yeah. you know, they're pretending. They're faking it. But they're Subway is run by a man. Whenever it's run by a woman. Oh, they're well, going to be honest as fuck for sure. No, no, no I, I was going to say that's highly sexist to say Subway would be run by a woman. Because then you'd be like, bitch, make me a sandwich. Right? Yeah, I tried. I, I like that. I like that. But the women, they are the thing to be conquered, because your fellow man, you could be stronger, you could be this, that, and the other, but if you conquer that mountain, you get a family, you get loved ones, you yeah, get but but like children. The real conquerors are are women in the in the bedroom. You know, like they're gonna fucking sow so much discord in your mind that by the time you're in the battlefield, by the time you're in the studio, by the time you're at work, by the time you're trying to get your shit together, you're fucking. Your whole world is upside down, and that's when they fucking get you, you know? Like, I, I have, uh, I, like, Napoleon Hill, I think uh, his first wife, it was, like, the love of his, of his life, you know? And he was remembering his, uh, her name um, in his deathbed, you know? Because yeah. that's how much impact she had on him. And she had a lot of fucking political power because she was uh, pillow-talking Napoleon, you know? Well, it sounds good that you're attributing to, like, political things because i would attribute that phenomenon to like a biological and how that's kind of weird because even in your biological deathbed what's more important than is my heart gonna stop are my family gonna be provided for are my it's the name of the women you love so biologically in your dna you're gonna love them even when the worst has come to the worst yeah and and i mean they're like the vessel for life you know so um it, it wouldn't be a world worth living for if women weren't here. So I think we just could get that out of the way that we're not a red 
pill, blue pill community kind of podcast. We just don't give a fuck, man. If you're a piece of shit woman, then that's what you are. And if you're an amazing woman who's going after her goals and shit, then that's what you are. You know, same for men. Yeah. What the fuck? But there's also the, I'm a little bit of a biological essentialist with the theologian. So it's like, your bodies are what they are, you know? Like, because we were talking about homosexuality. I think it's a bad deformity. I don't think it's a natural occurrence. I I never can believe that someone well, could is, it be a choice also? Like like um like could somebody who was heterosexual his whole life one day decide I'm gonna try this, you know? And would that be considered homosexuality? Uh, you have to get very nuanced with the definitions. That, be- that's all fucking hard to, be- to because to what what you said is homosexuality, right? So like I, I kind of will go to the example of like the word pedophile. So this happened to me. I worked at, God, this is going to get me killed. I worked at a high school for like 11 and a half years. And one day in the beginning of the year, students coming in, you don't know any of them. Guy walks in, big ass fucking beard, fucking six foot something, muscular, vascular like you. You know, he looked like he could chop down any tree, especially mine any day. And I'm like, I'm going to love parent teacher conferences. And guess what this motherfucker does? He sits down. And I'm like... so okay, He was a student. So I go up to him. I'm like, hey, uh, do you need something? You need help? This is like second period, whatever the fuck. He's like, oh, yeah, my name's so-and-so. I'm a student. And I'm like, I check the roster. He is. I'm like, what's your ID number? He tells me. Because no parent would know their kid's ID number. Oh, shit. This is a freshman. So, like, the question would be, am I a pedophile? Oh, okay. But, but, but like... That's not the same. We're, we're going into like some gray area territory where it, 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 I get what you're saying, though. But no, because you were initially attracted to something that you believe to be an, to someone to something to someone who you believe to be an, an adult. You know, same same for me. It's happened to me where I'm like, hey, what's, give me your number. What's up? And, and then, well, I'm, I'm I look young, but I'm all tatted up. So that indicates that I'm at least 18. You yeah, know? a little older. And so she. She tells me, I'm like, I'm 17. I'm like, ah, you know, like, you're still cute, but I'm not going to go there, you know? Yeah, and she would be a pedophile, but she would be attracted to, like, your... That's what I'm saying about homosexuality. If you, like, learn to like sleeping with a guy, I think homosexuality has, like, an external definition and internal. The internal definition would be, do you like the sexual gratification of sleeping with a man, you know? Okay. But if, like, in your mind, you're like... I'm just using him like a fucking fleshlight or something. But in my mind, I'm thinking of a girl. Then I think you're still straight and you're like walking very dangerous territory. Yeah. Have you seen um, Tiger King? No, I haven't. You don't have Netflix, huh? I, I might, but I haven't seen it. Okay, so it, it's... A dis- Carol Baskin. Yeah. You, you know about it, at least. A little, yeah. I know the memes. This thing is making me burpy. Um... This motherfucker hooked up with like <laughs> this motherfucker guy. <laughs> he, he hooked up with two straight motherfuckers back to back. He married them both, and the first one he fucking killed himself, like in in the zoo that he. Wait, owned. wait, 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 wait! A guy married two straight guys in a row and made them kill themselves. Well, you're not paying attention. I hope listeners can. Uh, Back me up in my eloquent description of what's going on in the world of Tiger King. Did I not hear and it right? And if I fucked up, then you guys could reprimand me. Okay. Restart. That was like my rewinding. You had the ghetto VCR. I had the one that went. <laughs> you had the one that took like as long as nah, a fucking dude, movie. I had, the, I had the cool one too, but it was like a separate gadget. It wasn't like a, like a, the actual VCH. It was like just for rewinding. Yeah, you pop a minute. It's like two minutes later. Exactly. Before it was like five minutes, and now you could watch the movie in one minute. I'll do you one better. I had the pencil. I don't know what the pencil is, so you beat me. You, you put the pencil in, and you. Oh <laughs> yeah, well, I used to, I used to spoon. You're talking about tape recorders, like like little cassette cassettes. Tapes. Yeah, yeah, cassette tapes. Yeah, I know. I'm talking about the fucking big old bricks, uh, mm. the VHSs. There was this fucking boy, and I'm getting sidetracked because yeah. Of my fucking dumbass uh, sound. <laughs> my, my, my answer to it is, no, I think homosexuality is always disorderly. And I think it's due to things that happen in your life. Okay. Uh, fair enough. 
Um, but I have no idea where I was going with any of this, you know? You need to stop smoking these these delta yeah, whatever the fucks just get the real shit bro. it's because i was going from like so uh, the main point i was making and then i made my little rewinding machine bullshit oh yeah i'm gonna explain to you what um what tiger king is going through right now okay so this motherfucker decides to he didn't decide they both decided that they were in love and that we we're going to get married. One of them was a straight guy and the other one was fucking Tiger King, you know? And That's exactly what I thought last time, by the way. Okay. I just thought it was weird that a straight guy would marry some dude. Well, here's the thing. These guys were fucking addicts. So... Heroin. Uh, yeah, Joe Exotic could provide uh, meth or whatever their their poison was. And you have to understand this. You know, as an addict... You are going to go to dark places to get your high, you know? So if you could get free shit by just a lot, by just hitting it, like, I don't know what the fuck happened behind their closed doors, you know? But I'm guessing that initially the guy was like, oh, I could get free fucking drugs if I just, like, go to bed with this guy, you know? Yeah. But I'm pretty sure him being a, a heterosexual man, it deteriorated him, you know, to the point where he was just like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm high all the time. I'm getting butt fucked by this guy that I don't even fucking like, you know. So I was like, what the fuck do I do with my life? What do I do with my with myself? I just like, I I crossed the line. Yeah, so I wouldn't say he's homosexual. Yeah, and if, his, if he his killed problem, himself, if you his know? problem is like heroin and drugs, I wouldn't say he's a homosexual. But I do believe there's a nuance there because. He's doing out of desperation what he has to do, you know, and it's just like, fuck, it is what it is. But if he mixes the drugs with the sex and starts associating the good feelings with the drugs with the good feelings of the sex, I think he can eventually become a homosexual. And that's because there's abuse, there's drugs, there's shit involved, which is exactly what I'm saying, that homosexuality is not natural. It's usually eventful in your life. Um. You know, I don't want to get moralistic about it. And, of course, everyone has their opinions. Like, there are several homosexual men who can debate with you, you know, yeah. that, that could have a completely opposite uh, experience of life. And his the way he developed was, in the end, the same as you, but through di different means, you know? Yeah. And so... I don't know, man. It, all of these things like abortion and defunding the cops, like defunding the cops is stupid, but, but, um, they're complicated issues nonetheless, you know? Yeah. Like I'm going to buy my ticket, to George Floyd to the, the prequel. So, you know, but it is, it is a weird thing to go back and forth with that because it's like, well, what things in us are innate. Do you know to suckle for your mom's breast? Because it's innately ingrained in you? Or did some pleasure receptors on your mouth made you like sucking and that's why you have what we think is innate? Well, I think some of those things are innate. Because um, there's like Komodo dragons. And I'm not comparing myself or us uh, to a Komodo dragons. Uh, here we but, go with the Komodo dragon shit again. Okay, But, but fucking okay. animals in general are born with certain things and usually animals are good to go from the fucking get-go you know because the wildlife is cutthroat and ours we are in, in a state of infancy for such a long time and dependency that um you know we don't we're it's obvious we're not born with like natural instincts you know but you know the the whole sustenance thing where you have to like feed off your mom's breast it's like it's been ingrained through our dna throughout the beginning of times well, you know so i think that's that's why I, I think where i'm taking this is that both answers are correct because where i'm trying to eventually go is to get you to realize that your body is the environment because where is the yourself if i cut off your leg you'll still be jesse a knee yeah a hip yeah if i control the bleeding i could cut you up to here yeah if i cut off your neck yeah i think you'll still be jesse there comes a point that I start meshing with your brain and then you no longer have your personality. 
But if you're still alive, you're still Jesse somewhere in there. So like all your, all the things you do are your environment. You know, if I could go into your brain and take out your memory cortex, you won't remember things and you'll be a completely different person. You won't be you anymore. I think that if you take off a hand or leg, I'm still going to be me, yes, but I'm going to be me without a leg. So there was a change, you know? So, <clears throat> But every second you make a flaw and I'm okay with you with your new flaw. And every second you're being perfected in some way and I'm okay with the new you being perfected. So all your things are based on environments. Yeah, but I, and I mean, I'm, I'm not arguing with you. I'm definitely like okay with everything you just said. But <clears throat> if I lose my consciousness, then at that point, I don't know if I'm me, you know? And what is me? So for eight hours a day, you're not you anymore? I might not be because I'm, I'm dreaming, you know? I could be a dragon. I could be this fucking, I don't know. I don't know. So I, I don't remember because this bullshit that I'm smoking, I, I cannot dream or I don't remember my dreams. You know, that's that's kind of like what I don't like about it because, man, once you stop smoking, you're like, oh, my God, these fucking dreams are vivid as fuck, you know, and you're like basically lucid dreaming, you know. Yeah, I, I, I might have wrote something that kind of speaks to that. But I don't know. Can I do that? Can I get up and get something that I wrote? Yeah, you could get up and do whatever the fuck you want. Okay, uh, man the board for two seconds. All righty, I'll, I'll hold down the ship while you fucking fuck off and then come back and then pretend like it, nothing ever happened. <clears throat> that, is, uh, that is the law of the land, guys. You got to hold down the ship if you're the captain. And if you're the ocean, you're supposed to take down the ship. So you decide who you want to be. I'm the ocean. Okay, what you got? A little presentation. A little presentation. This is what you live for. I wrote this for Jesse. No, you did not. Yes, I did. Okay. I think I've even read it to you once. Okay, so you're dedicating me a poem. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Now, if winter comes and takes my life, will it be the death I had in mind? Or will I be frozen in the ice to preserve the way that I died? I am appointed time and space, and I am the mind that I create. If I change myself, can I still stay me? And so I am the truth that I create. And so where my matter takes its stand, no, it doesn't matter who I am, because I'm going to be me again. That was dedicated to Jesse. Wow. It's so odd that it actually made a lot of sense with the conversation we were just having. It's scary. You don't need to be afraid. Have any of those quirks ever done you wrong in the past? Nah, man. And you know what? These conversations, I can recall. Like, the first time I, when I came back from Denver and we went to Dennis. And we literally spoke for, like, almost 11 hours, if not 11 hours. Like, who the fuck does that? Yeah, that's kind of weird. The waiter's probably like, what the fuck? Do you guys not have, like, a living room or... <laughs> Imagine she was back there, like, my boss says I can't leave until I'm done with this table. The, the motherfuckers don't leave. Oh, that would have been fucked. Because she was not going to leave anytime soon. Yeah, well, I mean, it's fairly poetic. It's... It, for most people who don't know, I don't, I don't know. You, you ask. You answer, I guess. Am I the type of person that looks to be that poetic? You don't look poetic. You don't look like anything, though. And I think that's by design. And you just, like, you, every, I feel like you're very self-aware of, like, your whole I don't give a fuck attitude and, and look, you know? And, and I think it's kind of like your disguise, your costume, you know? So we're very much alike. Yeah, we, we definitely wear masks, uh, not just you and me, but I believe to that. Cause think Let about me clarify, it. I do not wear masks. I don't believe in that bullshit. You go jack off to Dr. Anthony Fauci, but that's not me. And there you guys have it, from the mouth of the horse 
fuck Fauci and the and the Fushi <laughs> and his fucking vaccine um, or vaccines and boosters and all that plethora of God knows what the fuck he's injecting into y'all's arms. But going back um, to your Walmart knockoff look, you know, I think that you could fucking say, hey, I'm going to wear some nice pants and a nice shirt. Maybe like actually grow out my hair and have a style, have it styled. But you're so such a minimalist when it comes to you and, and your persona, you know. So so you're withholding almost everything. You're not you're not allowing anybody to be in, you know. Yeah, that sounds about right. That would be difficult to not because if you don't withhold, then you have to let out, and to let out usually means, you know, things that are poor, uh, not good outcomes. You know. Um. It depends, man. If it goes out, if you let it out when you don't intend to, a lot of negative results happen, you know. But if you're in anguish or if you need to talk to someone, but you're like, ah, I cannot be a bitch about it. Sometimes it, it works to just talk it out, you know, and let it out, as you say. Yeah, but it, it's <coughs> it's weird because like, like two, three weeks ago, no one would know I have new clothing because my closet has almost nothing, but I have new clothing. Because I went to a Walmart, and I was like, I'm going to buy myself clothing. Which, for everyone who doesn't know, I have like a phobia of that. So, I got the clothes. I thought, this could possibly fit. Because I'm also fat, so it's like that awkwardness also. I went into the dressing room, which is the big problem. And then, (laughs) I took off my pants, my shorts, and tried to put on these pants. Had a panic attack. And they're like, sir, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like laying there on the floor or whatever, like half my <laughs> pants. They eventually got security to come and like open the door and like to see what's up. And by the time security opened the door, the cops were also there. So it's like my fight ass without a shirt, pants halfway down, like on the fucking floor, piss myself. Where it's like, fuck. You did not piss yourself. Yeah, I did. Oh my God, Thomas. And so they like, the cops like walk me out and there's like paramedics. And the paramedics are like, yeah, we know about this guy. And then the <laughs> and it it sucks because the the paramedic, me with like fucking my pants all wet, he's like, "You almost did it this time, man. You almost did it." And one of the police officers bought me the clothing. Dude, that's sick. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you you need yeah. to fucking like get out of your shell. Like you are literally a turtle, you know? Yeah. You give me like turtle sage vibes, you know? The turtle sage? Yeah. Like you need a fucking um Go at it from the same angle like your needle phobia. You know, you yeah. went head first. You don't. You, you fucking do it religiously still because you wanna not fucking be weak. Yeah. You know. Ultimately, yeah. that's what it is. You know. Yeah. Competence is the is the the negation of fear, and if I'm competent, then I wouldn't be fearful. Damn! I did. Did I not hit that? No, you have to wait till the light does it, and it, like, it hides, and it... Bro, fuck all this technology. Yeah. Uh, but, look, keep going to Walmart, you know? Or go to fucking JCPenney. They have better dressing rooms, you know? They're, they're more private, you know? Get yourself know. a nice polo shirt, you know, with, like, some nice shoes and a nice belt, Fucking change your Velcro fucking wallet, you know? Yeah, I actually do have a leather wallet now. But oh. <laughs> I used to have the Velcro one. You had but it for years, dude. I know. Those things, you know what's weird? It's like a $2, $5 fucking wallet, but lasted you like 10 years. And like a $30, $50 one is going to fucking last you a year. And then it'll be like all flabby and tearing apart. Yeah. And I mean, that is a product of my environment to like my illogical phobias because as me myself i could understand go buy clothes no one ain't gonna do shit to you you're a full grown fucking fat ass man who's gonna try to rape you in the middle of whatever the fuck like the the self of me knows it's illogical but the environment in me my biology which is the environment is saying there's a panic there's a fear there's a whatever the fuck you know there's a threat you know so in that way it's like i think all flaws have a biological component to them of our decaying neuron system. 
Well, I think you're talking about traumas, you know, and definitely traumas have a poisonous effect on us if we hold on to them long enough. You understand that, um, like you or even me, you know, we have situations in our lives that we just like, we know that it doesn't serve us and we know that it ultimately hurt us, but we hold on to them because it's a part of us. It's our part of our identity and that's that's the problem, you know. You need to reboot the system and just uh, hash out this l remaining part of your life like a, like a person who stands on his own two feet, you know. And this goes to me and everyone else who's going through it, you know. It's it's hard. It's hard to live this life. Yeah, there was, there was a tension in there about, like, morality. And it's like, I think our morality is pretty all right in the beginning. But once we start experiencing our body and the flaws of this world and the flaws of reality, then our morality is get is chipped away at, you know. And I think it's a full component, like a like a geometric component that's called our morality. But we shave off certain sides and clip off different things to help us live in this world. But we can only have a more flawed reality in the future. We can't connect those pieces ever again. Yeah, because you cross the line like that, like. Um well, it's it's like this the 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 their legal pot pens or whatever. Would I ever do that shit? No, like you you were a completely straight edge kind of individual. Yeah, but you know? my that part of my morality was chipped away at because the good thing is to not ever smoke marijuana or whatever. But it was chipped away at because I needed something to help me with the trauma. So by having a more skewed morality, I'm more able to cope with my trauma and thus do better in other areas of life for that but then what you're admitting to if you say amen to that is that chipping away at your own morality brings out a general better a general gooder you know <coughs> no tree can grow to heaven without its roots reaching down to hell that's uh carl Jung. before you you get all whimsical oh, about what i just said no i was about to but i can't because my phone's <laughs> recording all this on the camera <coughs> but i was gonna write show you another poem i wrote for you and i can't remember it right now but there's a line that says the in the people your friends are those people who bring you things from the holes you'll never dig and in turn you bring them fruits from the branches they'll never climb that that was the poem it's kind of like that, but that's the point that some people go out and dig in the soil and they could bring you the iron, the ore, and the metal. And in turn, you're the person that goes into the skies and you could bring them back the fruits. Yeah. And you meet together in the middle and we live a lovely, beautiful life. I, I love that poem. And You love that poem? I, I you never heard it. I wrote it down on my phone I know. I'm, I'm saying I love the poem that you wrote oh. for me, which I appreciate also. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> um. You're talking about friendship, like genuine friendship, you know, where you're like, you're constantly mitigating what the other person does for you, you know? So, like, you keep balance, you keep the balance of the relationship, you know? Because sometimes you find yourself in a romantic relationship. She's fucking hot. She's probably above your league. And you feel like, damn, like, I cannot lose this one. I'm going to have to marry this one. And you start doing whatever the fuck she wants. And 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 you know she's in charge um not overtly but it's obvious because you're fucking just bending backwards for her and you know that's a one-way street it's not reciprocal you know and the moment you don't fucking go that one way it's over and in a friendship so it's unconditional I, you know i need to tell you there was that time with the cards and stuff, and you were like, how did I know you have that capability? Okay. But you always ask me what's one of my capabilities, but it's hard to describe it to you. But what are my capabilities? And now we're talking supernatural because I hit the black one, and it seems it has a good effect on me. Um, one of my capabilities is I could see the shape of personalities. I could see the shapes of moralities. Okay, what's my shape for my personality, my morality, my aura, my whatever the fuck, uh, geometry? I could literally get a pen and draw it, 
but you have to tell me which no, one. No, no, no. Well, describe it. Describe it. Because this is a podcast. Wh- which, which one? Well, you have like four my, that. You... My personality. Okay, your personality. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, your your personality. Think of two water droplets that are pulling apart. And they have that curved tension in between. Okay. You know, like two gooey things that you pull apart. Yeah. And like there's a bigger mass and a bigger mass. They're connected yeah, through yeah, that. Yeah, like, like gum, you know, you're just like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, but like two two, two of them, like, but the circles yeah, at the I end. I see it. I see it. I'm like, pretty sure everyone sees it now. Okay, cool. That's the shape of your personality. Okay. It looks like balls. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Meaning, but because of that personality, ballsy motherfucker. That's what it's all about. Be- because of that personality, you're susceptible to individuals who have lasso-like personalities, like rat. Sorry about that. You're very easily manipulated by people who have donut-shaped personalities because they could grab onto that hook. Oh. Because yours is like that. A donut-type personality could very much pull you along, and those are the type of people you like the most. Fuck yeah. They're the hottest. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's my ability. It makes no sense. But neither does your fucking ability. No, it makes sense. Neither it, does it, your fucking ability, so fuck off. How about that? Well, <laughs> I, I don't... Look, bro. And we could talk about it, but that was like... That was very odd. But that is so true with what you're saying with the whole person. This is good? Yeah, they're yeah. all good. You're in the neighborhood, ain't you? Because you know it's all good in the neighborhood. Oh, dead silence. Yeah, like, I love dead silence. You're wine. doing good. You're doing. You want you want some more wine, Mitch? What the fuck you want? <coughs> I still have wine. Very good. This one's actually good. He picked it out. It's a Roscado. <coughs> Roscado Trevinzio <laughs> Indigante de Jorgeria Tipica. We're not sponsored by these motherfuckers, but do like a little ad, uh, ad read, like freestyle it. R- Roscado. It's for those. It's for windpipe. Roscado. It's for those nights when your husband has to work late at the office, but you know he's cheating. Hee <laughs> hee. Fucking guy. That's what it's for, fucking... All these fucking chicks who are having relationship issues are going to be like... You're cheating on me, bitch? (laughs) You're drinking the Roscado, ain't you? (coughs) You know her ass is cheating. (coughs) It tastes like the sweetness you don't get from him anymore. Ah, Don't you hate that? They say that, like, after two years into... a committed relationship, as they say nowadays, because yeah. most relationships nowadays aren't committed. Yeah, that's true. Um, anyways, um, after two years, uh, you know, run dopamine receptors, experience goes down big, big time. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just like, it's almost as if we're not designed for a just one kind of like uh, I don't want to sound like a fuck boy saying this but it's almost as if we're genetically designed to not marry just one chick for the rest of your life and then pretend that that's all you ever want to just because you got wondering eyes don't be the rest of us <laughs> holy creatures do sure because you're of your father Satan but I'm of my father the Lord Jesus Christ so I don't know what you're talking about well I don't see that. I don't. I really don't see the whole. But I'm gay, so maybe I don't know. But I feel like when guys are committed to a girl, they get like crazy fucking committed. Like, they're like, yeah, dude. You know? And and the problem is, and and everyone who listens to this little fucking short bit is gonna fucking agree with me. Even girls and men. The moment you decide this is the one, and I'm gonna give it all my all because I have been treating her. Like fucking shit. I have been cheated on her, but you know what? She's fucking. She she's earned her stripes, and I really want her. You start simping over her. You start buying her flowers and shit. Next thing you know, you're getting dumped like a fucking dickhead. And when you could have fucking be cheating on her and 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 treating her like shit and still get laid, but no, you decided to be a gentleman. 
Well, it's because you don't understand. She likes the fucking asshole. When you start being a gentleman, she's out. No, and, and look, that's not to say you're supposed to be, like, deprecating towards your, your woman. No. Um, oh, no, that's may- not exactly what the fuck you just said. No, it's a joke, you know? And I, and you know what? I, I'm going to be very adamant to be very raw with the comedy because... Fuck it, dude. Like, if I'm going to get canceled, I'm going to get canceled for for some good shit, you know? You're going to get canceled? Who the fuck is you? (laughs) My three followers. No, and you know what? Like, I got to tell you this. Fucking, I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, I lost my job at the bodega. It's horrible since I got canceled. Shut the fuck (laughs) up, bitch. (laughs) No, but like, everyone is getting canceled, though. You know, like... You, you try to make a point, you try to say something like that that's not status quo, and then they shut you up, you know? Like, you don't have to be this super fucking Andrew Tate to, like, get canceled, dude. Wait, like, wait. you could say something about the C word, and, and let me tell you what the C word is. Come here. You could say the C word, and they'll fucking, like, uh, tag your fucking video. Okay, so these... And you, ha- you could be a nobody. So, you know? so I'll, I'll give you an example of my, my, what I call ability, the personality of the people who control like the algorithms and the narratives are like that. They're like a blood cell and because like a bowl, I guess. And okay. be, because their personalities are like that, what they're you doing is unifying everyone because the easiest way to make us not care about our enemies I, it, I would watch my wording when you say unifying, because I think they're, they're the we're not there but like these technologies are used for discord public discord you know and so but it's in your opinion that they're trying to divide us but it's no no i'm not saying that they're trying to divide us i corrected myself i'm thinking that it's more or less the fact that these technologies just naturally in incite discord between us but think of what they're doing they're making everyone not care about outrage because let's say, let's say Will Smith, instead of just slapping Chris Rock, like fucking killed him right there on stage, right? Mm-hmm. We're less inclined to be super angry because we are like, oh, this is another canceling. This is like when outrageous things happen, you know, when, when a cop kills a black man and it's, you know, police brutality, we're just like, eh, okay, police brutality. I'm done hearing about that. So we're not as outraged anymore. Okay. And they're doing the same thing with different programs because it's like so and so got canceled. You're no one in the world really cares that they, you know, the Little Mermaid's black. We're not. No one in the world is outraged by that. They're just like they're arguing over their bullshit, but every individual knows that it's bullshit. So we're more unified. Well, I mean, like we all, as an individual, have so much bandwidth that we could fucking, you know, put out. So you could give a fuck about two or maybe even ten a hundred things and you could be passionate about two three if you're good five you know if you had the fucking energy for that but then after that it's like bro the trash in the ocean the fucking police brutality um you know uh, russia and ukraine it's a lot of stuff so but that means you don't care about any of that stuff you you kind of know about it, but like, really, when someone tells you, um, the polar ice caps melt, do you give a fuck? Is that something that you actually like? Actually, want to care about? No, and I I I'm not gonna pretend that I do. You know, like I personally am passionate about like impoverished communities. You know, like not just the individual who fucking trashed his whole life doing drugs and all that shit like i'm talking about literal communities who are just going through it and they don't have food to eat and uh, shelter yeah it what they're doing is they're calming down society by making it look like we're actually angry at each other it's a it's a cooling effect that they're doing on society right now like joe rogan talks about it he says that um ebay changed their color from yellow to white and everyone hated it Okay. So they brought back the yellow color on the eBay page, and then for 365 days, they lowered the color. And at the end of the year, it was white, and no one cared. Because those things no one really actually cares about. 
I, I think that's the whole like growing up effect, you know, like where you're just looking in the mirror while you're brushing your teeth, that you, you do what you do day to day, year to year, and you don't notice it until you look at a picture from two years ago. You're like, oh, yeah. I've, I've changed, I've grown. And yeah. what, what they're doing is they're changing your personality and measuring how fast they could do it. It's like the water bottle. Those water bottles have a shape and they made it like that because they want us to think differently. Are the toys, products, the things that they show us, the news that they want us to believe in, changes our personality in the way they like? Well, you know, like... <clears throat> Even the shape of a bottle changes our personality just by touching it. This bottle makes me feel a different way than that bottle. Well, I think your opinion of it might differ. Uh, and something about it might change your internal being. But... I mean, I, I could get behind that, you know, like there's like binaural beats and shit that you use to calm yourself or tap into your third eye type of shit. So but, get get this. You you talked about binaural beats, right? Yeah, I just you, said binaural you've beats. You've heard them, the right? Dun, 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 there's, dun, dun, dun. there's two places where they're hidden, but you have to be paying a lot of attention. The first, you look up Christian music in the 1990s. And almost every top Christian music song in the 1990s, under the the chorus and under all the music, there's a binaural beat. There's a... Mm -hmm. Because it's literally trying to program you to be religious. It's a frequency. Yeah. And they have them in Christian music. And they the other place that has them is in modern pornography. If you turn on a porn, just listen and try to hear for a binaural beat, they play them. Well, look... Marilyn Manson's fucking not I don't know how many, if he's fucking put out any new music or whatever I don't follow him I don't I don't beautiful people is where I end with that guy you know but um they said that he, this guy put some fucking frequencies in his music that would like incite you to kind of like throw up kind of shit yeah you know like these things are powerful, you know, and your opinions and your feelings and your perception of, like you said, your environment is also powerful. So I don't know, man. Like, But, but it's because, like, it, the, the connection step is the thing that I have the ability to make is like this. You're hearing, a, hearing the binaural beat, right? You're hearing it. Okay. And what happens when you hear something is you have an eardrum full of fluid and the shape of this drum is making waves in the fluid and you interpret that and that's what makes you think. So the eardrum is a physical thing and that's why we hear because it like moves the water inside. So it, <coughs> actually our perceptions and the powerfulness of binaural beats is by transmitting shapes to us which influences our personality. And I, and I think I don't know if you could get behind this idea but Doing psychedelics have made me feel that like the true, true thinking, true understanding is feeling. You know, like the the real knowledge comes from here. You know, not from your brain. You know, like this is the source kind of thing. You know, we're just too focused on on the the processing machine, but we're not looking at the motherboard. You know. Yeah, we we often say shit that we don't really know ourselves. You know. Like, we've heard it and we believe it because we've heard it a million times. But it's like, in reality, do you know what the fuck you're talking about? Probably not. You know, and there, it's simple things. Like, I don't want to do flat earth thing, but you can. It's like, oh, they're so dumb. The earth is round. And it's like, you personally, have you ever verified that? You've seen the proofs and stuff out there. But I don't think I believe. I don't think. Well, I've done the proof. So I do believe it's round. But most people, it's just like. Do they know it or do they just well, say it because they heard it? Like, if they had to write a list of all the things they figured well, out themselves. I think that if you if you start disproving the fact that, like, there's the possibility that the Earth is flat or that it's not round or a globe, you know, then you're walking into a dangerous territory where you're basically saying, I am in a virtual reality kind of shit where nothing is real and they're just like putting whatever the fuck they want. Well, think of you know? how many family members you have that still to this day wear the mask. And it's like, no matter how much evidence they've been given, 
they still kind of um they're still afraid well my mother kind of already went through her whole like religious um covid scarce yeah ah we said the c word damn it that's on you not me yeah (laughs) fuck it you know, I only have like three followers, as Thomas says. Demonetized the <laughs> point zero 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 one cent is gone. It's like nobody gives a fuck about him, but let's delete it anyways. Mm. <laughs> nah, man. Um, it's it's creepy when you post that question because there is a possibility. You know, there is a possibility where this whole situation, being alive, is not even real. You know, you're just like stuck in a stuck in a pod, like in the matrix, you know, with some needle going down your spinal cord, you know, and you're just sustenance for this battery that charges up all of these like cyborg aliens. Yeah, but that's that seems to be the truth. You know, it's a possibility. Again, you want to keep your mind open for not only the. The impossible, because even though it's an impossibility, for most people, it's impossible. Because reality is reality. The earth is round. I could Google map... But do you know that? I could Google map my fucking uh, property in Denver. So, But I'm saying, apart from what people have told you, do you know that? No, hold on. Like, let, me, let me finish. Like, If I can get a sil- satellite visual of the shop in denver from here then i'm pretty sure i could get a satellite visual of the whole fucking planet and there are plenty of scientists that are honorable and are you know trying to put out honest work and even the dishonest ones they can all concur that the earth is not flat Now, I am not a scientist, and I don't plan to be a scientist, and I don't give a fuck if the earth is round or flat. But if I put my money on the fact whether if it's round or flat, I would go with round. Does that make sense? I mean, not really. Because what if the earth is just a city on a hill? What if the earth is, if we know it like that, but it keeps going and there's more land? It would give the appearance of roundness, but they would just keep us from from the edge and t- m- tell us that this connects to this. Maybe, you know, like, fuck Jupiter, fuck Mars, that's right next door, fuck the sun. You know, if it's yeah. endless, you know, then that means, like, Earth is the whole universe. Well, then that would assume that the sky is flat. You know, sometimes I do have this weird notion that, like, my experience is just my experience and everybody's just NPCs, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, that's very condescending and uh, arrogant of me to say, but uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people get that notion. But you're, you're talking about, like, you you talked about, like, the stars and the Jupiter and stuff being round, right? Yeah. But what if that's just a movie they're playing us? What if it's not actually there? What if they turn on the heater during the day and then they... Put on the air conditioner at night. If they can and make they, this and they're kind making of like a movie. virtual reality, this reality, uh, this real rather, um, I, I don't think they would be using such antiquated things like turning on the air conditioner and heater. No, what I'm saying is what if they're controlling the heavens and it's just a movie they're showing us? Yeah, man. Like all of these questions <laughs> are awesome. and they, But they go nowhere. Yeah, they go nowhere. That That's why I go nowhere near these questions often because they make my head like (laughs) what if yeah um but what about microdosing because why don't you just do a big dose i i've done a big dose in new mexico before but oh yeah you did some crazy shit you did the ayahuasca rituals yeah the little whatever it is yeah it's, I mean, I've done it, so what do you mean, why wouldn't I? Because I've done it, so. Yeah, I forgot you, you've you done it, so my question holds no fucking regard at this point. Yeah, but the microdose. Alrighty, so like, since you have done like a big dose, and I have big dosed with you, 
um it does change your wiring big time dude like the way you think the way you act the way you see things the way you understand things is very 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 drastic after you uh consume like any kind of psychedelic really the day that you learned you could do things that were beyond natural were you on psychedelics no and you know just so we don't keep people in dark um you were basically bugging me about doing this game or this I need to use training. the restroom. Can you tell story time while I'm gone? Yeah. So this motherfucker essentially told me, hey, like, let's do this fucking card game. And so essentially he would ask me to pick a card. And so I did. And, you know, he would guess every fucking card that I guessed, you know. I personally was jealous of his ability, you know? So I felt like this guy was kind of like doing like some sensei shit and wax on, wax off. He was going to teach me his ways, you know, because I'm the kind of person that thinks this. If he can do it, then I can probably do it kind of, kind of situation. But you know, we all have our limitations, and some people are gifted and anointed, uh, if you believe in all that. So, he keeps guessing all of my fucking cards nonstop, and after a while, you know, he he decides that he's going to, uh, quote unquote, teach me. And, you know, at first I was kind of excited, because I was like, okay, I'm going to learn some crazy shit. And... Fuck yeah. Coming in clutch with the beers. They were on sale. I swear I don't drink. Except for today. On a fucking Monday, dude. <laughs> I'm an Uber driver, so that makes sense for me. What's your excuse? I don't do shit ever, but you know what? This is a special moment. You know, we're talking about aliens and the F word. I'm not going to use the F word anymore. It's such an ugly word. You know, I think it's more ugly than the N-word. Yeah. I think so, dude. Like, uh, say it in your head. Like, just the word. Like, you, you, Well, the word... The, the personality. The personality. The word has like a... Ah, got, got, you know, like... <laughs> while the other one was like a... Mm-mm, mm-mm. So, so, if you don't like... Ah, got, got, but you like... Mm-mm, mm-mm, then maybe... All the... Mm-mm, mm-mm people are gonna be like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Oh, God, oh, God. You're like fucking throwing like a repulsive, like, oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're both ugly. But I don't know why we, as a, a ghetto community, don't refrain from using such foul language, you know? I think it's because there was a period where it's like becoming cool and shocking. And because our TV shows said it, you know, like the first time Bart Simpson cussed. You know, it was like a big thing and he was like all cool and he'd cuss and there was a whole episode about cussing and shit, you know, (laughs) and that like got to us. It got to us. And now we were like, I want to be cool. I want to say my first fuck. I want to, you know, and because it was like you were a a cool person, there was value in being that vulgarity. Our whole society became like that. Well, yeah, I mean, talking shit is like a a scale that people actually like. um, How was the word? that actually people can applaud you know like if you could you could give a good singers and come back with some comebacks <laughs> yeah know, like, like like i was i was like earlier on in like little bible study type groups and shit and the little goody goody christian kids there would be like oh yeah that new spider-man movie really sucked and in my mind i was like you're supposed to be goody goody Christians, and that sounds like, that sounds less vulgar than normal people, but that's still vulgar because it's like sucks. It sucks on what, you know, like that's that a a goody goody Christian boy shouldn't be saying that sucks, but we say it because even that is no longer vulgar. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's vulgar. It, it sucks. 
What does it suck specifically? <laughs> Who cares? It what sucks. thing does it suck that would be a negative connotation? Dude, my ex sucks, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, but there's only one interpretation. It sucks dick is what it's saying. No, there, there's not just one interpretation. It could be a million interpretations. You just inserted a dick. So that's that's one interpretation. Okay, what's another interpretation of it sucks? A carrot. That it sucks a carrot? <laughs> that's such a negative thing? That doesn't... Exactly. No. So it's not even a bad thing anymore. The it's only, a, the only way you... It's positive. Could... So maybe Spider-Man wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> No, nah, it, it, it did suck. But no way home. Um, no. Look, all Marvel movies don't have a plot. They don't no, have Spider Man Three. Actually, oh, fuck you, Toby McGuire. Fuck you, dude. I love that movie. <laughs> you don't fucking talk about my Tommy the emo Spider Man bullshit. Yeah, yeah like, I oh. fucking my whole fourth grade personality was based on this motherfucker. So you don't get to talk shit about him. Yeah. All right, he was my hero. And and when they all three came together, you could tell like, oh man, this guy's the OG. Like people are happy to see him. And I mean, I, I because they made the movie I, to tell you that. I think Andrew, Magu- no, I, I, Toby, it, Andrew Garfield, Andrew that, Garcia, Andrew Garfield. Okay, or Garfield something. Okay, um, <laughs> he gets a lot of love too. I don't know, I. I, 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 fuck Spider Man, dude. It's all about Batman. I agree. The Joker. And the Joker. You know, uh, I wish I could have stopped you from getting that one. Why? Oh, because uh, to get Joaquin Phoenix? No, because when you got it, I was like, everyone's going to look at it and be like, he's a Joker fan. <laughs> he's a fucking incel Joker fan. Incel? You know? Are you don't, Joker fans are yeah. incels? You don't know the meme? No. Yeah, the Joker fan is like the incel on the internet that's like typing out how he's gonna like do kickboxing this year at whatever the fuck, you know? Oh, that's very on par with what's going on with me. <laughs> <laughs> how is your jujitsu going? I am an incel. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Nah, nah. Um, no, you don't look like one, but that's why I thought people it was gonna look like you know like a Joker fan, which is that's a whole meme in itself. Yeah, I did not know about the incel correlation with the joker i just thought the joker is pretty badass no well the joaquin phoenix i think came after you got it didn't it yeah big time it happened it happened last year so or the two meme years ago. the meme started because of the joaquin phoenix because of all the articles that are like this is the intel movie of the century or whatever the fuck so any joker fans were well incels. i think there was an outreach because of the the graphic violence that was displayed in the movie you know but I, uh, other than that like um i didn't hear anything about incels yeah, but they're, I mean, they're saying this that this did happen before the insult situation. Yeah, then, so yeah, why would yeah, you want did. to stop me but th- from getting the fucking Joker if it happened before? Because you had the ability to see it. To see what? The to Joker. See, to see the Joker. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it, and it was fucking great. No, but before. You have foresight. Well, okay. Going back to the story. <laughs> so yeah, you this motherfucker kept fucking hitting fucking nail on the head you know like i would pick a card and he would motherfucking get it and i'm like wow that's impressive if you could teach me your way teach me so we're going through the lessons and i gotta tell you i got frustrated i got annoyed and then i realized hey man listen i'm still impressed but i think it's becoming ever evident that I don't have that woo-woo power that you just fucking displayed eloquently this whole time. And then it got even more annoying because at this point I had given up and this motherfucker is just nagging me and nagging me and nagging me. And I'm like, dude, let's play chess or some other boring shit that we could find to do. <laughs> Not this particular boring shit because it's obvious that I cannot fucking read your mind. And even if I try to guess it, I'm not going to be able to guess it, you know? So, like, what's the point? Like, it's just me guessing at this point, you know? And so I tried it, like, a couple more times because he was very, very adamant for me to try. And towards the end, um, I decided that I was actually going to try to, um, what's it called? To guess the fucking card, for lack of a better word. You know, and so he picked his card and I was like, okay, I don't know what really trying looks like, but I'm going to meditate. 
you know so i just like try to calm my mind and close my eyes type of shit and since the light was on my my visuals were red you know like it was like i was like in a red room like a foggy red room and then next thing you know i see something from the distance getting closer and closer and closer and then boom it's almost as if there was like some plexiglass for covid um the card was there you know like while my eyes were closed i saw the card and then i immediately opened my eyes i was like four of diamonds you know like i i felt like that was it like that was the truth but my common knowledge or my regular knowledge was like oh i'm just guessing but like this is as good as this is as good as guess as it's gonna get you know because I fucking, I intuited it. <laughs> so, like, one part of it that I, 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 I never tell you, but since you've said it so many times and it's, like, funny, and we always talk about how do you know, how to, whatever, but another aspect of it that you've never seen is that the card that you were able to see in your mind was a four of diamond, which is, like, the four corners of the earth, the four directions, north, south, east, west. Okay. It was a directionalist card. Because you don't think of the these playing cards as like tarot type cards, but they kind of are because you would pick the four diamonds, which represents the four corners of the earth, where the angels blow their four winds. Okay, but like you chose the card, I didn't. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, but that's the card that you were actually able to receive. Okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, so it's... if you guys want some tarot readings, just hit me up. Um, I'm going to tell you if your life is going to shit or not. <laughs> um, You're just going to look at them if they look tired. Yeah, it's going to shit. Dude. Again, not going to fucking say anything, but the Joker. You need to have sex. You're like this close. One month away from becoming an incel. So... Are you telling me? I, I had sex like two days ago. I don't know what you're talking uh, about. You, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my imaginary patients. Oh, okay. Is that what you call people who you do readings for? My patient? No, oh, yeah. I'm, like, I'm going to fix this aura. You know, I, I'm going to... I don't know. Did it heal you? I'm going to... What's the word? Uh, chiropractic your spirit. Well, answer. Did it heal you to know that you could do that? No. It confused <laughs> me. And like... I could talk about another situation where I was intoxicated with some heavy, heavy, heavy uh, substances. And I just ended up having a full-blown conversation in my mind with my friends, you know, who were also intoxicated. And I was under the impression that, like, we were, like, telepathically speaking. Now, that cannot be fucking confirmed. So, So in that one, what you need to understand from that one... Is that it's not that you have a cell phone and could call the other person, but that one person you're thinking of, he has the ability to connect you. He's like the lines. He's the fucking Wi-Fi? Yeah, he's, I, he's the fucking Wi-Fi, and you guys don't have that ability yourself. So me and you can't do it. But if he's in the room, all three of us can do it because he's the Wi-Fi router. That's so gross. Let me tell you why. Cause, you get closer. Because it feels like an invasion of privacy, dude. Like, yeah. after that happened, like... Like, I was, again, confused, you know? Confused up the ass. And it started to feel like, this motherfucker's in my head. <laughs> He's fucking with me, you know? So, like, uh, again, drug use, heavy drug use, and just bad decisions. So, I was very volatile with my thoughts. So, yep. these are just, these are just, like, my perceptions of what I thought was happening, you know? Like, tele- telepathy and, you know people infiltrating my mind there are other things and i've proved it so now that you've seen it what are you gonna do with it um i hope i don't fuck off but i don't know dude like it's very true what they say you know like with um with anything you know like responsibility is it's hard dude it's hard, you know. Sometimes you just want to fuck off and not care about fucking Russia and Ukraine or anything. All of these fucking things that people are motivated about now. Like, they're so fucking stupid, dude. Like, a, a 
an example, you know? And I, you know what? I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, this Black Lives Matter stuff, it's gross, you know? Because they're talking about oppression. They're talking about uh, slavery. They're talking about gentrification. And in the end, this is all a fucking play- level playing field at this point. Like, World War One soldiers, World War Two soldiers, they would come back and they would get hanged in their fucking... Um, in their uniforms if they were black you yeah. know they're over here dying or put in their lives on, in risk for the country and then they come back and they're getting lynched nowadays that's not happening so if you're acting like a bitch like a whiny bitch about that situation then you're fucking doing a disservice to those real men who didn't give a fuck and didn't whine they just fucking fought for the people that didn't give a fuck about them Yeah, you know like, you fucking have the opportunity to do something about your situation, regardless of your gender, regardless of your fucking, um, you know, ethnicity. So it's like, what the fuck are you fucking crying about? Like, if your life is shit, it's because you're shit, you know? Well, yeah, it's whenever I see the trucking school, it's like free trucking school and we pay $100,000 a year. It's like, they'll get you through the schooling. And a hundred thousand dollars a year off of ten years, you'll be a millionaire. You can make it in America. The fuck are you complaining about? You have to sit in a fucking truck and drive it. Like, do it. Like, if you really want to be that millionaire, surely a hundred thousand a year gets you out of the ghetto. Yeah, and and I mean, if you're chasing gold, then that that's what it is, right? But if you do have something that you're genuinely passionate about, and 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 I, I, I'm kind of like of the schooling that like if you're doing something that you love, money will follow sooner than later, you know? Like you don't have to fucking follow what your parents want in terms of being a lawyer or fucking doctor. You know, there's people that, that like didn't live their lives and they, they want to live their lives through their children, you know? And, and if you allow your, your life to be lived through your parents... Um, you're gonna be doing the same shit to your kid, you know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's it's again hard to be a human being, you know. Like, cause, cause like, who's right, who's wrong? Which religion do I go to? What fucking martial art do I take? What gym do I go to? What diet do I take? Everybody's so fucking tribalistic on top of that. So, like, you cannot fucking pose a question without people getting offended. No, yeah, it's... But I feel like their offense is not real. But they get to let out their frustrations by pretending they're part of that team. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants to feel purposeful. So that's why they, we have all of these communities, you know? But they, they're trends. They're trendy, you know? Like, feminism and all that is trendy because it's never stood on a very clear, um, what's the word, moral compass, you know? It's always changing, always evolving. There's always a 2.0 version of this shit, you know? Um, If women want to be men, then that's fucking fine, you know? Like, the fucking playing field is level then we are not gonna fucking court you we are not gonna buy you flowers and we're not gonna fucking do the whole fucking let me simp over that ass we're gonna fucking make demands and you're gonna fucking say yes or no and so are we you know simple as that like why the fuck are we gonna fucking keep fucking pretending like we have to open the door and all of this shit like because it's it's like what the fuck are you are <laughs> what is the message, you know, like, sorry, the last, the last dialogue that you've given sounds exactly like the Joker mean people. <laughs> You're going to listen to us, it's, bitch. It's, We're going to make our demands. It's red pill. <laughs> it's red pill time. You remember when I said you got, we, we weren't aligned with, with any of these guys where well, we lied. We tricked you. This is just a no, fucking. It's not been red pill. It's, it's green pill because it's the Joker. <laughs> oh my god! It's, this guy. it's a fucking green pill. If we were red pill, we'd be, you know, getting families and shit. No, nah, I mean I'm obviously exaggerating. I'm trying to be funny, but like, if you want to be a gentleman about things, then that's fine. You know, that's your prerogative. But definitely, you know, allow your girl to 
take you out to dinner, you know? Like, allow her to pay half of the rent if you guys live together. Like, So, so as an Uber driver, I fucking hate this shit, and I don't know what to do about it. Maybe you have some good advice. Okay. But it's a guy and a girl. It might be mid-autumn. They get into the back of my seat. They're sitting there, put their seatbelts on. Very respectful. And the girl goes to the guy so that I don't hear. She goes to the side and tells him, can you tell the Uber driver to raise the heater? And then the dude, uh, hey man, can you raise the heater? And I raise it instead of what I should do, which would be, bitch, you could talk to me. What the fuck you need? No man to be asking to the Uber driver to raise the heater. What the fuck? You that fucking weak? You need No, you're not even that weak. You're that manipulative. You have that guy asking the Uber driver to raise the heater when your ass is right in the same fucking car. Right, and that's the thing, right? Because women are, uh, as a whole, becoming masculine, and I'm I'm kind of cool with it. I like it, you know. Like well, I, I I like yeah. me a strong. Woman. But that's like a pimp. That's like, yo, tell the Uber to raise the heater. I don't have to talk <laughs> yeah, to the yeah, Uber. Yeah. You're my fucking bitch, yeah. and you have to talk for me when I want Suck some shit. Suck my vagina. Yeah. Like, yes, babe. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's fucking crazy, and like I'm sitting there, and I'm like. This bitch think like I don't hear women or something. Look, I, I've been victim. I, I've been a victim of a dominatrix. So let me tell you, it happens. You know, you could get pussy whipped really quick, and then next thing you know, you're fucking asking for dumb shit to the Uber driver. But listen, I don't know what the fuck you want me to give you advice for. It seems you have it pretty down. Um, you did the right thing. You didn't flip out. You didn't tell the bitch what was what. But. Um, <laughs> Look, I don't know, man. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Like, because women don't like bitches. No, they, they don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't. No, no. What the fuck? Like, we, we don't like them either. Nobody likes bitches. <laughs> yeah. Like, nobody. That's why they're nobody. called bitches. Exactly. But if you act like a fucking bitch to make her happy, oh my God, dude, you're doing the opposite, you know? I have this, like, friend who's, like, a solid six. And she's always like, how do I find a guy? How do I? I want to hear it from a gay guy. I'm like, first of all, you make bad decisions. You should hear it from a straight guy. Yes, but, that's but, a stupid but, question. But I'll know? tell you what the fuck you need to know because I still know the answer because I'm a guy. You know? And I'm like, okay, step one, it's hard. I know. <laughs> but the first rule is you have to be pleasant. Ah, oh, God. Okay. But there's not many more rules after that. The second rule is be attractive. We're done. I know the first rule is hard for you bitches, but just be fucking pleasant once in a while. How about that shit? Once in a while works for me, but um, the the goal is most of the time, you know. But once in a while works for me. When you're like once in a while pleasant, yeah, uh, it changes the dynamic of 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 the the relationship, you know. Nah, but she doesn't understand that shit. She doesn't. She's like, she's like, oh, it's one in the morning. Should I text him, where are you, and then not respond? And I'm like, you fucking bitch. Yeah, like, that's weird. Like, fuck you. Like, like if you're going to do the whole where are you thing, you might as well fucking flip out and, and like, write on Bible verses. You don't just want to fucking dry hump them and then fucking leave, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, like, she just constantly with, like, these, what if I do this? I was like, just be pleasant, bitch. Like be pleasant. He'll he'll fucking stay with you. He doesn't care how ugly you are at this point. Like if you're just a little fucking pleasant once in a fucking while, instead of, mm, I don't know how we're gonna pay that bill this month. Like fuck off, bitch. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, situations, but definitely, uh, if you're not gonna be pleasant, at least be respectful. You know, because once the respect is gone, uh, you know, again, gray areas, shit. You know, I I think that if you're in a in a relationship where you're you're not in a good place in terms of the respect situation, you should fucking bounce. You know, no matter there's no love that can fucking patch over a tarnished. Um, you know, I I don't want to go as deep to say a tarnished soul. You know, but like if if the woman that you have deemed to be the love of your life spits in your face kind of shit you know then your soul has been 
more or less tarnished, you know? Well, I think I could see it more than other people because I'm not attracted to women. So that doesn't no, appeal no, no. to me. But like, it's, I'm talking about a romantic situation. So yeah. it doesn't have to be man, women. It, in your case, it could just be you and the person that you love. And, and there was a, a scuffle and he said something that you know, was really, really hurtful and really, really, uh, uh, what, what, what do you call it? It was under the belt. Yeah. You know? Well, it's just a weird perspective for me because I see it in every family ship that I know. I always see like the husband is usually a fucking awesome guy and the woman is always a fucking bitch, like a huge bitch. Like just going to their house, like the husband, oh, welcome, welcome. And the woman would be like, oh, you forgot to do this. You forgot to take out the trash can. You forgot. Yeah. And it's just like, fuck. Like, imagine having to live with that shit your whole life. Well, I think this is a, this, and I might be wrong, you know, it, it could differ from, again, situation to situation, but it, you find yourself that, like, if you're a dominant personality, you're going to, like, gravitate to someone to mess up, you know, because if you have two dominant individuals, two lions in a cage, only one's going to leave, you know? Yeah. Well, your partner must, should be someone who compliments what you don't have. Yeah, and I and I understand that sentiment, and also somebody who can be the eyes to your fire, you know, or you know, the calm in your storm. Yeah, I'm. It's needed, but fuck, like even even normal. It's just normative for women to be that aggressive, you know, in a marriage and you know, whatever. It's just normal for them to pull out like just aggressive things they're not welcoming and loving they're like how much is this uber gonna cost us are you sure we have enough in the bank account where it's like you keep that in private but they'll say that shit to like degrade the man for not having enough you know and i think that this is just like an, a perfect example of like the pendulum swing, swinging you know like uh going back to the james brown situ situation and his song um, we have been uh, dominating and conquering and uh, raping and pillaging. So, you know, women are kind of like done with that bullshit, you know? And it appears that men are also because we're becoming pussified, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's like we're all in an accordance, like, yes, yes, master, yes, master. And and the woman just has to fucking lift up her leg a little bit and 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 give you the impression that this is going somewhere. And you're like, yes, master, yes, master. I'll go bring you some food. Me need precious. <laughs> and then you don't get precious. Smeagol didn't get precious. He fucking died <laughs> for precious. <laughs> I don't know. That's, I'm, I'm glad I don't have those problems. Cause fuck, like, man. Even like with the girl that I went out with for like two years. Yeah, dude. She that, would, she would do some shit that I was like, this fucking bitch. What? Who the fuck does she think I am? And maybe she stayed with me because I was aggressive. Because sometimes she would do some shit, and I'd like look at her because she's an adult. I'm an adult. I look at her. I'm like, you need to cut your fucking shit out, okay, bitch? And she'd be like shocked because I guess she's never seen that. She's like, no, well, I didn't get enough croutons in my whatever the fuck. I'm like, no, look at me. Don't fucking do that shit in public, okay? <laughs> Cause I'm gay, so I'm not attracted to her, and but I still have to like spend time with her so that people believe I'm not gay. And it's like, bitch, what the fuck you think I just say? <laughs> and she's like, oh, he's dominant. I'm like, no, I'm just annoyed at your ass. I know you were doing you were doing what you were perceiving to be like this, like, hey man, like just natural response, and you just automatically became more attracted to her, probably. Yeah, she was just like fingering him herself at night to the idea of me yelling at her. Yeah. Pointing fingers at me. I wish those fingers were up my ass. Did I tell you the the Christmas surprise with me and her? Mm, probably, but you could go ahead and, and say it again because I don't remember. It wasn't Christmas. It was New Year's. I sh Dad, her mom, and her brother. The and, whole fam. Yeah. So I, I show up. I'm going to be designated driver. The dad waves me in. So I go inside. You know, they're probably not ready. Women, right? Well, they're all fucking ready, including the mom who's hot as fuck. 
So I walk in. Coming from a gay man. So oh, yeah. He, she's still hot as fuck. She's a, she's a well, dang piece. Their whole family is hot as fuck. Even Tanya, I think, is hot as fuck. Okay. So we, I, I go walk in, and there's a cooler on the floor. And I'm like, oh, they called me in to help them carry the cooler. I'm like, cool, let's carry it. Let's put it in my trunk. And the, and it's filled of, filled of these, like, fuck, it's like these, but, like, with fruity flavors. Oh, the Trulies. Yeah, because a dad had previously seen me drink with them. Uh-huh. And I, like, spent the night at their house. And he's like, I guess those are the ones he liked, but I was drinking those because I would just refill it with Coke to pretend I was drinking them because I didn't want to get a DWI and I had to leave. So the dad had put all of these on ice. You and I'm couldn't like, get an empty, like, Michelob Ultra or Budweiser or no, whatever. No, I got the fruity one. No, no. Okay, well, the sin is yours. Whatever. Still. So they're there, and they're, like, walking out. I was like, oh, cool, <laughs> let's, let's carry this. And the dad tells me in Spanish, no, this is for you and Tanya for tonight. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, let's put it in the trunk because we're all going to go to the party. No, 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 no. We're going to go to a party. You guys stay here. You guys have a fun night. And the dad comes up to my ass. He pulls out his wallet. He pulls out $200. He puts two, He gives me $200. And I'm like, what's this for? What's it? You guys have a fun night. Whatever you guys need, you have it. You guys have a fun night. So I'm like, this is it. Like, I could buy everything on the Taco Bell menu and I'll still have more. Like, what's going on? He's like, no, you guys have a fun night. And he, like, puts it in my shirt pocket because I thought I was going to, like, a fancy party or something. So I'm there. $200, 18 of my supposedly favorite beers, which I was faking it, and Tanya. And they leave it. I'm like, aren't I going to take them? No. So what I have to deal with for the next, like, seven hours is not only getting drunk off those beers because they bought it for me, but ordering food and also trying to get Tanya to get off my dick. Oh, that was a, an eventful night for you. Yeah, because she was like, come on, my dad gave you $200 and all these beers, we're going to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's New Year's. Once that ball goes all the way down, pop, it's the New Year's, you know? like. Okay, like, let me ask you a question. Do you think she knew, like, deep down... Something was fishy with you? No, probably not. Because I didn't. But what? That, that's like, I didn't. I didn't. No. You know, even when you when you told me, I was like, "Say what?" I'm like, "What the fuck, bro?" <laughs> oh, I'm not faggoty. You you looked at me like a straight person my whole life, and it changed. Yeah, and I mean, I still see you the same. It's just like I still see you like a straight person. Ah, fucking faggoty, faggoty, fuck. Yeah, I mean, like, you like dudes. You know, but like you, you still hold true to the Thomas image that I had yeah. prior to you and dudes, you know, but I think she believed it. And th so later that night, yeah, we have to sleep together in the same bed, Spo which we've done before. Spooning? Uh, or did you do the whole, I'm going to give you the back because I'm tired, I was just babe. like holding her hand like that because I was already drunk and, you know, she... Takes off her shirt. I'm like, okay, okay, whatever. She takes off her bra. I'm like, okay, she never does that. She at least keeps that on while she sleeps, you know, when we're sleeping together. Yeah, because she's like, oh, it's hot here. And then, Bye, babe. Yeah, like she. But this time she's like. She at least keeps her bra. And, one extra step. Yeah, and she like starts like making the moves. I'm like, fuck. Okay, I'm drunk. But this has gone on for a year and a half. If I don't do it. Dude. Like, you guys dated for a year and a half, and you never did anything. We did it for her? two years. This this story goes beyond the New Year's Day. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But prior to this situation, it was a year and a half and no action. Yeah. You didn't give it up. No. You didn't give. No. What the fuck, dude? You're a dick. <laughs> You're an asshole. That's what you are, dude. I know. That's why I left dude, her. Dude, you gave her probably blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have any. <laughs> fuck. Dude. Yeah. All right. Well, continue because this is this is spice. <laughs> okay, you want to get to the <laughs> spice? Well, on that day, my chile was not. You know, it was, mm -mm. so I was yeah, like, cause, cause the fuck? She, she doesn't have thick balls. Yeah. So I'm like right there, I'm like fuck. <laughs> not a cup of tea. <laughs> she, she's like rubbing and she's trying to grab things, and I'm like no, <laughs> no. And we're we're like drunk, and she's like, my mom just texts me. They're not coming back till the third. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, come back to us. We didn't finish the story. <laughs> Jesse, come back. Dude, that, dude, if you were 
comedian? Be a bitch, man. Don't be a fucking bitch. And then that's why you're like, thank you, Detroit. <laughs> Okay, so this story is going to have an extended ending, I'm assuming. <laughs> okay, well, nothing ever extends that night. Let's be clear. Okay, so it but, ends by the text message. What text message? The mom text message. Oh, yeah, no, she came up with that just so we would fuck, and I wouldn't be nervous about it. Okay. She's uh, just uh, being kind to me. Okay, okay, okay. So, you know, she's like, keep going. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? So I'm like, okay, I'll meet her halfway, right? Like... I'm not going to let her suck my dick. We ain't going to get nothing on. She's not going to give me a hand job, but I could kiss a girl. Right? Just, I'm drunk. I just drank 18 of these fucking whatever the fuck, and they were like the worst fucking strawberry flavor in the world, but I'm drunk. At least give her a kiss, right? Okay. So I, like, I, I turn in the bed, and I, I'm like, no, Tanya. Her name's Tanya. Yes, you've no, mentioned that. No, Tanya. Not till we're married. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Detroit. Until <laughs> we're married. Dude, you're... Oh, dude, I did not know this about you. <laughs> you're next level thick. Oh, you, you thought it was normal that I was with dude, a girl. if I was a closeted gay man, and then I was in a year and a half relationship with a girl, and I understand the sentiment... I am not a gay man, but I would feel horrible and I would want to be like, hey, she's been a trooper this whole time. She's been keeping up with my farce. So I will play along with the farce. You know, I got myself in this situation and I'm going to get myself out of it. You know, fuck myself out. Of it. Well, what the problem is, and I could see where the trajectory could go awfully wrong you have sex with her once and then next thing you know you're in the parking lot or you're at the drive through and she starts sucking your dick what the mm. fuck shit well yeah because i turn around and she's like well at least we could kiss before we get married so i like say okay so i, I need you to understand this from a straight man's perspective but it sounds like a weird gay thing to say but kissing her felt like kissing a 10-year-old boy. And what I mean by that... Oh, dude, what the fuck? What I mean by that... <laughs> kissing, wait, wait, wait. You're saying that this is coming from a straight person's perspective? Yeah. So kissing her felt like kissing a 10-year-old boy. Who the fuck is this straight person? Every straight person. Every straight person would say that kissing Tanya would feel like kissing a 10-year-old boy specifically. Yes. I don't want to kiss Tanya then. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm right there like doing whatever the fuck with my tongue. No passion at all. Just like whatever. Like just all. all like, get... like, like those fucking flippily floppy <laughs> yeah. things. I'm like. <laughs> and she's like, why are you so good at this? And she's just going at okay. me. And I'm like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're, like, you're 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 dancing with the dragon. This happens for like twenty minutes. Okay. So her encounter of the story is like she had a hot makeout session for New Year's when the thing went bang, you know? Okay. My interpretation of the story is like I was like in bed, fucking drunk as shit, just like for twenty minutes. You know what's crazy? What? As you were telling the story, I was imagining you guys at the drive thru. <laughs> at the drive thru? No, we <laughs> Yeah, we, no, you guys were still stayed like, the yeah, but but yeah. So for the next six months of the relationship, I have to like kiss her like every time I see her, every time we leave, sometimes randomly in public, and I have to walk around with this woman, and be like, what if she wants to kiss me right now? Ah, oh, there it goes. There, uh, uh, yeah, I love you, whatever, bitch. Like, get off me. When you know, when you guys broke up, did you tell her why? Or do you just... No, I made an excuse. Okay. And up at this point, she's still oblivious. I don't know. I assume. I never told her. Yeah. Um, she never asked you why you guys never got it on? Yeah. We didn't never got it on because I was waiting for marriage. Oh, yeah. But you, I would never propose. You ended that conversation real quick that night, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. I'm a good Christian boy, you know? You know what? You're an asshole. <laughs> 
but you're also an evil genius, and I respect <laughs> that. No, but like, t- whenever this is the worst part of the, about the relationship, my, uh, the camera could see me, my ass, my ass, was, your tits. was with like this <laughs> this chick Tanya, who I perceive as very pretty. Yeah, I look at her and she's like, she's she's. I vaguely remember, and she was. Pretty. It's like yeah. find another guy like you could do better than this asshole, and I'm the one disgruntled not enjoying her. Where it's like she could find someone better than me. Like come on, it's so weird, man. Because I think it was just the fact that it's like you want what you can't have. Yeah, she. You fetishize it even. She's used to guys who like, oh yes, honey, I'll do instead of me like you can quit that fucking shit off. You stupid. <laughs> get off my dick, bitch! <laughs> yeah, get off my dick. Not till get... not till marriage. I'm a Christian, motherfucker. Backhanded with the Bible. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm a good man. Not like those fucking whores that you keep sleeping with, you stupid bitch. Um, how, have you found that like religion and like this kind of like um, ost- ostracization of homosexuality has come to an end, or is there still a, a shunning for? Gay or bi individuals, LGBTQ X Y Z. I think I would answer that with I think it's clear that homosexuality is a sin, and I think people participating in homosexuality, homosexuality, are sinning against God, moral, morally, ethically, you know, all sorts of laws and leeways are being broken whenever you conduct yourself in a homosexual manner. So, even though I am, I'm not a person who would say. No, homosexuality is not a sin, or it's moral, or it's neutral. I don't think it's neutral or moral. I think it's immoral. I'm not going to generalize, but the the few uh, individuals that I've met, and I would say that it's like, out of ten, it's six, seven. So, it's majority for sure, but not most of them. Uh, there, there, there are people who are understand boundaries, but... These motherfuckers are bold, man. And they don't just fucking... They don't court you. You know, like us regular men. We'll fucking buy chocolates, write you a poem. Give you a and, hint, at least. And, and take you out to dinner and expect a fucking blowjob on the first date. But at least we'll go through all of that. We're not just going to fucking put it out on the table right off the get-go. Do you want to suck my dick? Yeah. I won't tell anybody. Hmm. And it's like, oh, dude, like, honestly, oh, man, like, oh. Jeez, man, like, uh, look at the time. Uh, you should have... Uh, oh, dude, like, this is so awkward, man. I, I'm just shopping for shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something. It's like, what the fuck just happened? I I don't know if I told you, but I had this deaf, mute, gay guy hit on me while I was at, like, a, a party okay. once. And this was a long time ago, man. But I was high as balls man and so i was playing beer pong and maybe i was winning or losing i don't remember but after the fact this motherfucker's like hey come here you know but like on audible you know because he's mute yeah and and so i'm like hey what's up bro and and then you know like he, he strikes a pose and i'm like oh what's up dude you know but um he strikes the post and he starts fucking ravishing his phone, like just fucking typing. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm and I'm high as balls again. So like I'm hyper aware of everything that's going on, you know? Again, crickets cannot fart without me noticing. Yeah. So like I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this guy, you know? And then yeah, he's like, What's your name? <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> and then I'm like and I did. I didn't like care to ask up for his name, you know. I was like, "Hey, cool. here's my name, bro." And then he's like, "Like, hold a moment." Like he just strikes like a, the the index finger, you know. And then he starts fucking typing again. Uh, and then he's like, with a happy face at the end, "You're cute." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and like. At the time, I was a little bit more aggressive, you know. I don't, I don't recall if at the moment with him, I was like um, threatened, you know. But um, 
his brother came in and he's like no 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 bro like like he's he can't hear he can't talk you know like yeah it's cool man it's cool like we'll just leave it like that i think there was a, like a little scuffle there but you know it is awkward you know i had another guy that i worked with that he just messaged me out of nowhere and he he had a boyfriend and he also worked with us and he's like hey do you want to do stuff with with me and, and i'm like no what the fuck like like i'm not on your team you know and yeah. then <laughs> and then you have a boyfriend like isn't that part against the rule apparently not apparently gay people are allowed to cheat you know some some of them are like that so i don't know man like it's weird because i don't know they don't hold themselves to the same regard as heterosexual men and i'm not talking about you specifically i'm talking about the general um very very vague specification of a group of people yeah but this is just coming from my own experience yeah no no it is very gross the way mo many homosexuals act it's very gross and obscene and you shouldn't put up with it but those are you know those are a lot of the vocal ones are like that most of the normal ones you either would never know or you never but the idea of like the loud homosexual it's because there is a class of people who want to be loud and gay it's because I don't want to be, or at least I don't want to sound like I'm being deprecating towards gay people because I don't give a fuck if, if you're into this, that, or the other. Uh, as long as you don't uh, hurt yourself or others, you know? The thing is that um, I cannot be as ballsy as a man is, a gay man is with me as I could be with a, a woman, you know? Yeah. No. Uh, I would go to jail or something. No, because there's an illness in homosexuality. It's clear. Um, because there's an illness in homosexuality. It's very prevalent for them or for yeah them to be like that. It's just like, why are STD numbers so high in homosexuals? We can't figure it out. Well, I solved the clue. Because you could bust a nut in like 200 guys a night and nut shit's going to happen. But if you bust 200 nuts in 200 women, you're going to get keep point zero 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 one percent of your check. You know, like... That's the problem. Gay men can be promiscuous. And it's just like the HIV community where it's like, once you have HIV, what else are you going to fucking get? Might as well go out and have all the fun you want. You know? If it's a Tuesday and some guy's on the app and says, hey, come over, you'd be like, why not? What do I have to lose? And, you know, go, just going full circle to your story, um, I have been in situations where I did not want to have sex with this particular girl and i was buying and this, this is why i'm telling you that i kind of sort of understand the the joe exotic situation because this girl was into me and she was also a dealer you know and i was into uh the obscure world you know i i, I, I partied and all that shit you know so i was getting free stuff you know yeah. But in re in in return, like she she would want to have fun with me, you know, and you know, like I, I I did fucking go for it, you know, at the first couple of times because I was like, it's an even trade, you know. But after a while, I'm like, I don't want to fucking have sex with you, like what the fuck, <laughs> like I'm and and then uh, I I did get high with her, and then she kind of like tried to get it on with me, and then I rejected her, like not implicitly, but like explicitly like i was just kind of like uh like nah and she's like oh so uh this is the first time i haven't touched you and stuff like that and i'm like yeah and i'm just there like oh my god i'm high as balls again <laughs> you know i need to stop getting high as balls and that and that's kind of like where i was transitioning from being high as balls all the time and, and just finding some middle ground so there was some seriousness to your marijuana use or your whatever else you were using. Oh, yeah. I was using some heavy stuff, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's your... Was it you who were making immoral decisions or was it just your environment that that's was making That's a great question. And I'm not going to... Again, like... <coughs> like, I do want to commend you for, for making that comment, you know, where you said, um, we all just talk a lot of shit, you know, like we are saying words that we probably don't believe in or we don't even fucking comprehend. So I'm not going to fucking pretend like I understand 
any of this whole like dynamic between substance use and the blur between your your personality and the substance well, so it's, it's like it does the substance reveal your most in, inner deep savage nature or does it just intoxicate you and then you act crazy since i know the geometry of your personality i can say that i know you're going to turn out well and you're going to be proud of who you become i know that's going to happen and i also can you know see your frustration currently because you don't believe it so but that's the shape this ball is a little smaller than the other one you're transitioning into greatness but i don't think you could see it so from my perspective, I could say you're going to be great because I don't live with your personal flaws. I don't live with you daily to see your personal flaws, but I still know it to be true. Well, we conceal most of our personal flaws. Like you're not going to go on Instagram or even on this podcast and just be like, hey, guys, welcome to another episode of I am a fuck up. This motherfucker had me at two, three in the morning taking a car out of a ravine oh, yeah, in a I fucking a fuck <laughs> <laughs> god damn it what the fuck are you talking about bitch and you call my ass my flabby ass you don't call any of your muscular Dude, friends I, you call my bitch look, ass listen listen again fucking bitch i'll post a question to you look at this hey this is shut how, the fuck up i'm, I'm gonna talking. carry a car off a ravine. i'm talking and let me tell you something i would like to fucking reverse the question to you does the substance make the man or the substance create the man and so i don't know man i don't know why i called you i was fucked it up. creates and <laughs> because i actually did the job you're not fucking in jail bitch well you did a great job man you're the fucking <laughs> real fucking hero here the, the, i am the joker and you are batman no but you don't see the transition and i see it in you and you're gonna be great but you don't know it yet that's why you're stressed out yeah well i mean i do feel like i'm in a transitional period like a like a um filler episodes <laughs> <laughs> you're the naruto season yeah two, no, three, like that's, four, how, that's how it feels honestly i feel like i'm just going through some filler episodes and then after this we're gonna go back to the next uh, plot twist or or conflict you know i'm gonna meet my match and i'm gonna trap the train and become a better version of myself and then i'm gonna kick some butt or maybe get my ass kicked and then we're gonna have to wait for the next season and it's gonna be great guys so tune in for another fucking uh, episode of DBA, DBZ. Dude, Dragon Ball Z was the shit always, dude. And even when it came back as super, like the animation was kind of shit. But let me tell you, it's still fucking like, ah, oh, oh, it still fucking got me fucking excited every fucking Saturday for it, you know? <laughs> I hope this episode, they scream very loudly for 30 minutes. They're, do, they're doing this whole, like, fucking TikTok shit. And I want to get to you. Well, I want to get to you. I want to talk to you about uh, the TikTok terms of service. Because they're basically get, you're basically giving up everything, dude. There's no privacy with you on TikTok. TikTok <laughs> is basically your best friend, dude. Because yeah. they know all about your nude photos, your text messages. And, and it's, like, it's fucking crazy, dude. Like, how much you're giving up uh, voluntarily maybe ignorantly because nobody reads the terms of service yeah. you know but um what's it called they're doing this little trend on tiktok and again tiktok is so popular right now that it's like leaking over to all the social medias like youtube and instagram you know yeah but they're doing the whole like can i get a oh and they just have like this rock music in the it's it's cute slash badass because it's like a cute voice <laughs> okay it's like a pikachu voice you know um but yeah i'm wondering where he's gonna go with this one but <laughs> oh yeah i am <laughs> not going anywhere with this oh, one okay, i'm just you. fucking making a dragon ball c like reference to everything that's going on with life yeah i'm checking like my encyclopedia encyclopedia <laughs> dramatic up here like how do these plot points connect what is he talking about who are we gonna check your exactly plot a plus exactly plot plus the animal that i cannot still understand is is it extinct or not what the platypus i'm sure it's still going it's still kicking rocks but doesn't that sound like an animal that would be extinct no I've, 
I still haven't gotten the memo. Like, if you said giraffe, I'd be like, come on, there's still giraffes. But platypus is like, did they go extinct? Did they not? Right? No? It's just me? You believe there's a duck alligator fursuit animal out there? Duck alligator? Yeah. No. Well, perhaps because uh, birds are descendants of reptiles. Oh, so. that's a good justification. Birds are descendants of reptiles. So. Hey, ducks are mini fucking T-Rexes for all I care. Imagine it's like um, Jurassic Park, but it was in the timeline when all the normal animals died. But all the fancy animals, like, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. so so there's two timelines. In one timeline, we kept the animals. In the other timeline, they kept the dinosaurs. Okay. So in their Jurassic Park, it would be our animals inside. They'd have, like, dinosaurs as pets and shit. Okay. And then they'd be scared because, like, a seagull would, like, get near there and go, uh-uh. And they'd be like, ah! What the fuck is that? Yeah. It's a big-ass mosquito. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some shit like that. Because in ours... The characters are, like, afraid of things that, she, like, it's always a doom, 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 doom. And it's that big-ass one that, like, eats leaves, you know? Thomas. It'll never hurt you. Again, I'm going to reverse. I'm going to uno reverse you. I don't know what the fuck you're going with this, but you have to hold down the fucking ship. You're a captain now. I need to take a piss. Let me take another sip to make it worth it. Oh, I need to hold down the ship? Okay. Do you like another mic test? So they could like <laughs> this motherfucker did a mic. Uh, I'll talk about it right now, but fuck. Uh, Don't notebook? be a bitch and talk. I don't know, man. I'm just trying to find my notebook. Sorry very much, but uh, yeah, um, Jesse does have the ability to do things that he doesn't know he can do, but it's very strange to have to convince him because he can only be convinced by seeing, and then he's more memori- mesmerized when what he sees comes true. So. He's going to go places. He's going to be able to find out what he's doing and he's going to be the person he wants to be, which is a very difficult thing to do. But if he's going to accomplish that, then he might know a thing or two, a thing or two about living. You know, it might be difficult to live, but I know he's going to be who he wants to be. So he's not going to die hoping that he could have become. He'll die worrying about other things. But that's the important thing, and he'll be able to die at peace. And if he dies at peace, maybe he does go to heaven. That's a good thing. But it'll take him a while to figure it out himself. Can't really see clearly. There's a lot of fog in him. But when it clears up, he's already almost halfway there. It's like the morning fog. You know it's going to clear up by noon, and noon is shortly approaching. Ooh, Jesse, you're back. I didn't wash my hands. Jesse, it's verified that he doesn't wash his hands after using the restroom. He just walks out with his shit-stained fingers and touches all the shit in my house. Oh, well. But yeah, he'll be good. I needed to represent my soul. I was talking about the root chakra. So burping is the representation That's of the... your whole soul or your root chakra? It's your root chakra. Dude, you're going to give me a lot of work in the editing process of this shit, motherfucker. Why? What do I have to do? I'm going to cut it out. How dare you burp into the mic? Welcome back. Welcome back. So we had a caller right now call about his ex. Apparently his ex... Mm, hold on. His name is T Rex. Yes. Keep going. I didn't, uh, how could they you call have known? Him Rex, Wow. Wow. Sure. Yes. That. Is, um. Well, he cheated on his girlfriend with his girlfriend's mama. Yeah. Baby mama drama. Yeah. And now the girlfriend is pregnant, and the mama's pregnant. The sisters are going to be grandchildren. And the caller wanted what to confess his crimes or what? Oh no, he he just wanted <laughs> us to say what type of brand these things are. It's cake brand apparently. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get that shit, bro? They they sell them like. Um, Did it work for you? Because I've been trying to hit it. In a... No, the white one hasn't worked for me, but oh. the other two do. Okay. It's just Delta Eight shops. They're here. They're legal. You go in, pick. They're them up. legal or illegal. They, 
you could smoke it in front of a cop and nothing will happen. Okay, perfect. It is legal. Look, for all I care... I bought it at the store today. If we didn't literally live five minutes away from a state that has a legalized situation with the marijuana, I would be thrilled that they came up with this variant. But since we do, I suggest people to just fucking smoke the real thing. They're going to track your fucking license plate one day and catch you. I don't give a fuck, bro. (laughs) God damn it. What? There's this like alternative that's legal, but you're committing whatever it is <laughs> just because it's there. Well, it's not capital murder, so it's like. And if they had like a variant of murder, I wouldn't do it either. So, okay, so I have values if that's what you're saying. No, no, the the values I don't care about because I smoke marijuana if it's real or not real or whatever. But it's just like that's such risky behavior. Hmm. Is it though? Is it? Yeah, that sucks when you try. I don't know. I guess I'm the capitalistic pig. So I'm like, when you try to apply somewhere, it's like right there. You got arrested. You're like, fuck. Hmm. No, I have, I have, I haven't been in a situation where I actually get arrested. I've been in situations where I almost get arrested. So it's like, I got arrested. You've never gotten arrested. How did I pop that cherry before you? Well, how old were you when you got arrested? Because I have gotten arrested, just not for marijuana. Oh, okay. And the guy that got me arrested, he got arrested for marijuana. Motherfucker got caught because he was a fucking idiot. And he doesn't know how to do fucking proper business. Like Tony Montana. That motherfucker knew how to do business. This motherfucker was not Tony Montana. And you know what? On top of that, he was a fucking rat, dog. A fucking rat. He ratted on me, dog. Motherfucker ratted on me. And I went to jail. I went to fucking jail, man. I, I got feel, arrested and shit in front of my family. I feel like you're quoting some shit that I've never seen. No, dog. I'm I quoting like my that, life. I feel that comes from like a movie in the 90s it's that I never saw. It's coming from my heart. All right. Well, hearing that, I was like, okay, it's not half-baked. It's not. Because <laughs> that's what the fuck it sounds like. Yeah, I am half-baked. I'm trying to get fully baked, though. Like a, oh, you know, talking about baking... I'm going to ruin... Okay, if oh, you no, haven't seen the I, new... I, I got one, but you No, no hold hurry, on, hold on. I'm going to forget mine. Fuck you. <laughs> Fucking, uh, do you know Bill Burr? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a comedian, and he came out with this new special, comedy special on Netflix. I watch a lot on Netflix, and so I stumbled onto the, his special, and he has this bit about abortion, dude, and, I, and it's spoiler alert, a slur, a slurring words now. So leave the video if you don't want to have it ruined. Okay. Anyways, the people that left, left, unfortunately. 